It's not actually doing anything, it's just noise. Fuck you, Quiz. I'm doing this my own way. I'm answering these questions my way. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I've just realized that I do that clap quite frequently at the beginning of videos. I guess that's more or less my signature at this point. Could have chose something a little bit more original than just a, a clap, but you know, it is what it is. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing another kind of quizzy thing. So when I did the reptile quiz, I scrolled all the way to the bottom once I'd finished the quiz, obviously, and I saw this thing. What reptile are you? based on your Myers-Briggs type. And I thought, huh, that sounds kind of interesting. Personality quiz to determine what kind of reptile I am. So I thought I'd give this one a try as well. Now this is by Teresa McLaughlin. Couldn't get more Irish of a name than that. So I'm in my snake room again, obviously, and I'll tell you this right now, it's quite warm in here. Uh, the thermometer back there is saying 25, so the ambient in this room is 25. And it kind of smells in here now as well. One of these snakes has just taken a shit. Feeding day was three days ago. So they're all starting to uh, release little surprises for me in their enclosures for me to clean up. Now some of you may be asking, what the hell is a Myers-Briggs type? And I'm going to be completely honest with you, I haven't got a fucking clue. So I googled it, and there's apparently four categories of Myers-Briggs personality. There's 16 different types of personalities with all these different letters and all this shit. I don't believe in any of that, and I couldn't care less. So I'm not even going to bother telling you what any of it is, because frankly I don't care and I don't believe in it. Kind of doesn't make sense as to why I'm bothering to do this video if I don't even believe in the concept. Anyway, let's start this thing then. Let's start this lovely quiz. Oh, you know what I should probably do is I should probably make a prediction. What kind of reptile do I think I am? Huh. I'm going to be royally pissed if they make me something simple. One of the predictable animals like a leopard gecko, a bearded dragon, or a bloody Kenyan sandbar. But anyway, let's start this. If birds of a feather flock together, what kind of birds are your friends? Well, penguins mate for life, and I'm single, so can't be me. Pigeons are the fastest flying birds, I believe. I'm not that fast. Ravens are intelligent. I'm not that intelligent. Eagles it is. Are you shy like a hermit crab, or outgoing like a puppy? I'm not outgoing, but I don't hide away either. If you could take the statistics of this bloody quiz, I bet that's the most popular answer of that question. Predictable as it is, that's kind of the reality. So a corn snake in the shower. If you found a snake in your bathroom, how would you react? I guess it would depend on what the snake is. If I found like a cobra in my bathroom, I'd be quite scared going, how did I end up in India? If I found a rattlesnake in my uh, washroom, I'd be kind of concerned as to how it got there and how I didn't hear the rattle as I was approaching. If it was one of my snakes, I'd probably just shower. Probably wouldn't even bother. I would calmly take it outside. I might burn down the house because there's a snake in your shower. Who are these lunatics? I would call the pest removal service. Yeah, if you're someone who's not fond of a particular animal, do that. Don't burn the bloody house down, you morons. People being scared of snakes is always a bit of a confusing one for me because I only have like two snakes in here that I would, you know, maybe say ow to if they bit me. That's it. Nothing else in this room is problematic. My brother and my mother have dogs and I've been bitten by both of their dogs. Both of their dogs have caused me to bleed, and both of their dogs bite a shit ton harder than anything in this room. And cats, cats are little f***ers, like 99% of cats are douchebags, that 1%'s okay, but the 99%, they're all horrible. Way, way worse than what I got in this room. Have you ever been told that you are either cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Oh, hearted, not blooded. Now, I've been called both of these, but I'd say that uh, the typical person meeting me on the street would probably refer to me as being cold-hearted. Do you feel claustrophobic when you visit the aquarium? I mean, I prefer the reptile house over aquariums. I went to university for biology and sea creatures and marine life were the things I was the most interested in. But I'm gonna say I prefer the reptile house over aquariums just simply because I'm in one, kind of, a mini one. Would you say you're easily bribed with treats? Absolutely not. Cannot be bribed, go fuck yourself. Out of the Myers-Briggs types, which one do you think sums you up the best? Now, I don't actually know what any of these represent, so I'm just gonna do it based on the title, I guess. The thinker, the mastermind, the inspector, or the giver. I don't give, I only receive. The inspector, I don't even know what that means, but no. So the thinker or the mastermind? I'm gonna go with the mastermind. Always one step ahead. Do you patiently stop and wait for squirrels to cross the road? Yes, or swerve. It's the only option we got here though, so I'll go with uh, if I can stop in time, I do. Beautiful snake right there. Which one of these snakes do you behave most like when you're tired? Now this is quite a weird question, because all four of these snakes sleep probably the same way, in a safe location, kind of hidden. And I don't sleep like that. Well, I guess I sleep in a bed in my room, so I guess maybe I do. Well, we're gonna have to pull out some snake stereotypes here, kind of. Anaconda, so fat and lazy. No, guard a snake, I like to sleep in a group, like maybe after having an orgy or something. No, not really into that. Green Mamba, don't really know where to go with that one. Car from the Jungle Book, not really big into Disney movies, so I'll go with Green Mamba. In a wolf pack, 
Would you be an alpha, a beta, or a warrior? And then the first option is a nurse. Well, I wouldn't be a nurse. So an alpha or a warrior? Well, I don't really want to be an alpha. I'd rather be a warrior. I'd rather be the tough one. When, when you look back at like some of the English kings, for example, they're the alphas, but they're useless. The warriors, the fighters, they're the tough ones. They're the useful ones. They're the ones people are legitimately scared of. They're scared of the alpha's ability to command the warriors. I'm going to be a warrior, and I'm going to be a rogue warrior. Fuck you, Quiz. I'm doing this my own way. I'm answering these questions my way. Which of an alligator's traits do you share? Weird question. I can be a little snappy. Yeah, I can be. That's a flaw of mine. I am fairly laid back until I need something. I have a tendency to be elusive. Extremely elusive, yes. I'm going to say elusive. Most of my friends probably don't know where I am half the time, so we'll call it elusive. If you were a Labrador, would you prefer to run free in a dog park or the forest? The jungle is more my style. Which of these apex predators embodies your sense of ambition? Ambition being the key word here. Polar bear, great white shark, saltwater crocodile, wolverine. We've got the biggest land carnivore and we've got two ambush predators. I'm going to say I'm a wolverine. I'm a relentless little shit. What sort of animal related job would fit your personality? Animal therapist. That would be funny. Imagine just sitting there. You guys remember Hunter, right, that I introduced recently? So imagine I'm just, he's lying there on the couch and I'm just sitting here. All right there, Hunter. What seems to be the problem? You lack ambition. Hmm. Where do you think this lack of ambition comes from, Hunter? I'm going to choose an animal therapist just because I think that's kind of funny. If dog commands were moods, what is your current mood? Sit. What might your spirit animal say about your sense of humour? Well, I am English, which means sarcastic humour kind of comes alongside that. It's about as common as us having bad teeth. It would probably say I'm sarcastic and witty. That's what I'm choosing. You can't stop me, it's my bloody video and I'm the one writing the quiz. Which of these creatures would instantly activate your fear response? Cockroach. 4,000 of them up there, so no. Scorpion. There's a scorpion in this house. Don't know where it is, but it's in this house. Spiders. Don't really care much about spiders. I don't know what the bottom item is, so I'm just going to say that. Elephants have great memories. What is your memory like? I selectively forget things, like important events and dates. When you feel aggressive, which of the big cats are you like? A cougar, a tiger, a lion, or a jaguar? I don't even know how to answer this question. Lions hunt in packs. So when I feel aggressive, I don't go and, you know, like get a team of us to go and attack something. Don't do that, I'm not hoodlum. Jaguars are very elusive. Tigers are massive. And cougars are sexy. Cougar. Do you have a big and bold laugh like a hyena? No, not really. I snort occasionally when I laugh, so we'll go with that. Would you describe your intelligence as being on par with an owl or an octopus? Well, I'd like to say all humans are probably more intelligent than both of those animals, but let's see what uh, we can do comedically with these options. They are both smarter than me. Fuck you, no they're not. I'm a little smarter than an owl. Fuck you, I'm way smarter than an owl. I'm as smart as an octopus. Fuck you, I'm way smarter than an octopus. They're different types of intelligence. Sounds good to me. Not the greatest comedy, but let's be fair, the best comedians write their jokes before they perform, not just on the spot. I could script, but I'm lazy. Are you the kind of person who cooks for your pets? No, but I'll give them my leftovers sometimes. I wouldn't specifically cook for my pets. My mother bloody well cooks like fresh chicken and everything for her dog. Her dog is a sport little shit. That's probably why. Fish like to swim in schools. Do you like to be surrounded by others? Eh, I like people, but I need a lot of alone time. A lot of time to do all of the shit that I'm doing because in case any of you haven't guessed I have a full-time job and I do this so socializing's definitely come down a little bit I'm on my own lonesome a lot more nowadays and to be fair it's not that bad I kind of enjoy it I don't have to deal with people's nonsense I just have to deal with my own nonsense and I can completely ignore that what part of being a parrot would you enjoy the most cursing at will when you want something are you sly like a fox well, it depends what it is I want. I'm like a shark when I really want something. Yeah, that works, because if I want something, I just typically go and get it. I don't really bother about beating around a bush, because it doesn't really get you anywhere. If I want it, I just go get it. Nice and simple. If I don't go get it, it's because I don't want it. Salmon is easily lured. What do you find irresistible about other people? Knowledge. I did a job a little while back where I was working in an apartment building with a man who was like 94 years old. He was in the Second World War and everything. I could have listened to that man talk for hours and hours and hours. If you have knowledge, on things that I'm interested in, I'll listen for hours. Which of these animals 
are you most like when you meet new people? What in the living fuck am I supposed to do with these options? What do healer monsters do when they meet other healer monsters? Probably nothing. What do hummingbirds do when they meet other hummingbirds? Sing to each other? I don't know. King crabs attack each other? Lemurs kind of huddle together quietly? I don't know, I'd just be a healer monster. I'd probably see another healer monster in the desert and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm going over here. If you want to join, join. If you don't, f*** off. Judging by your heart, or lack of heart, which kind of family dog would you be? Well, I don't want to be a lap dog or a purse dog. I'd want to be something useful, so I'm going to say a service dog. Have a purpose in life. Are you suspicious about things like black cats? No, I believe in nothing that isn't 100% proven. Basically, I believe in nothing. Not really, but I love spooky black cats. That's the only bloody option, whatever. Sure, is what it is. Oh, we got some Mexican beaded lizards there. Wonderful. Oh, that's... We got some Mexican beaded lizards. That's the freaking animal that I am. All right, well, let's see what it says. As an ESFJ, whatever the flying fuck that means, Nothing gives you greater pleasure than providing for others. Sometimes, I mean, I'm not that charitable to be completely honest. I don't think that I'm a, you know, really outstanding person by any means. I've got my flaws. Like the Mexican beaded lizards, you are comfortable taking a stand. You are extroverted enough to gather up your fellow lizard people and fight for everything that's right. You offer strength and relentless drive that always inspire those around you. Inspire is probably the wrong word. Most people don't even know I'm doing it. Out of this entire description, relentless is probably the best word that describes me. I mean, look at this, right? Barely any people are watching this channel and I'm still bloody well doing it. And I'm still gonna be doing this for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however many fucking years I choose to do it. Probably for as long as I can stomach it, which will be a lot longer than I should probably do it. But Mexican beaded lizard. Not really sure what that means, if that's good, if that's bad, who cares, it's a load of bullshit. ESFJ, load of bullshit, who cares. But there you go, there's me personality type, a Mexican beaded lizard. I mean, I did live in Spain for three years, so uh, I can speak some Spanish. That's really the only correlation I can kind of see. Alright, so let's take a snake out, as I promised at the beginning of this video. I'm not going to take out any of the quadplex snakes, even though what's going on down there is quite adorable. I'm going to take a photo of it with my phone but you guys can't see it yet. I'm gonna leave the quadplex animals to be exposed during, you know, the housing of the animals into the quadplex. So here's a snake. Let's move me a little bit closer to the camera here so you can see him a little bit better. This is Scud. Let me know in the comments if you know where that name came from. But here's a Western Hognose male little bugger and as you can see he's quite mad at me this is pretty much what he does the entire time you are handling him or near him or doing anything to his enclosure or the enclosure beside his this is his entire personality he's a little devil just loves to hiss like he's just show right it's not actually doing anything it's just noise hogno snakes are my favorite snakes because of this personality they can be Little demons, but they're harmless. Most snakes, when they feel scared or intimidated, they musk, right? He's not doing that. This is him purely trying to intimidate me. It doesn't work. He's been doing this since the day I got him, which is about four years ago now, and he's still a little monster. All right, all right. Give the Myers-Briggs quiz a try yourself if you want to waste your time and come up with an animal that has really no relevance to you, probably. Similar to the Mexican beetle lizard with me. 